Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 33 of the J Situation podcast. I'm recording this on September 29th, 2020. Man, I think I need some intro music. I've really wanted some for quite some time, but the music I happen to want is copyrighted. <laughs> and I need to reach out to the artist to ask for permission. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think. I think I need to do that. And so to make matters a little more complicated, uh, it's kind of a famous artist. And so I'm not exactly sure how to go about it. Like I've Googled, you know, a little bit to try to figure it out, but there are a lot of different answers. Uh, and I think, I think I might need to hire a service or something. I don't know. I, I actually do know some of the band members family, like kind of casually, you know what I'm saying? So I guess I could try like non-official channels to weasel my way in or something. I don't know. I actually, you know, if, if anyone out there listening knows about this stuff at all, please reach out to me and tell me what the heck I'm supposed to do. Uh, I would be very appreciative of that. I think a short segment of a song as an intro would be cool. Kind of break up the monotony a little bit. I've always wanted to do that. So that's kind of, that's my, uh, you know, line of thinking there. So anyway, how you folks doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty well. Goodness gracious, I, I went out yet again this past weekend and did another test program, like I told you I would. Uh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I got data coming out of my ears right now. It's, um, there's a lot to do. So, for those of you joining us again, welcome back. And I trust you have found some ammo by now. Uh, for those of you new to the podcast, welcome. Thank you for listening. And it's 2020, and if you, if you like to talk about guns and silencers and how to go broke spending money on them, you've come to the right place. <laughs> Just so you know, the podcast is brought to you by Pew Science, pushing the silencer industry forward one test at a time. Visit pewscience.com for the suppression rating, the simplest and most accurate hearing safe ratings for your suppressed small arms. Again, the suppression rating is in section five of the silencer sound standard, and the standard walks you through gunshot noise, sort of like Wikipedia, but cooler. All right, there are six parts, and they're all on pewscience.com for you to read. If you haven't dug into it yet, that's totally fine. You can skip directly to section five. That has the suppression rating. That kind of lets you know how silencers stack up in comparison to one another with regarding to sound at the muzzle and the shooter's ear. And it gives you a hearing safe dose limit for the particular platforms on which they're tested. You're not going to find this info anywhere else, so just keep that in mind. But if you have any questions, you can always let me know. You can email me at tech at pewscience.com, or you can submit an inquiry through the website. Remember, the sixth and final section of the standard contains all the reviews. All the sound signature reviews are there, and so go check them out on the website. You can support this podcast, Pew Science and our testing by joining at pewscience.com. And you can rate the podcast five stars on iTunes. You know, we're gonna win, we're gonna win this battle to let the general public understand how cool silencers are. It's gonna take a while, but I, I have faith. Okay, five topics for you today. The first one is a question. I get this question a lot. Dead Air Sandman S or Rugged Razor? Hmm. I'll give you my thoughts. Topic two. Just finished some testing, and so I have, you know, a few more observations for you. I gave some observations for you the last time, but I have some more for you. Topic three. New sound signature review coming this week, so that's good. Been probably waiting for that. Topic four. Wanted to ask you folks something. Have you ever, you know, practiced with your weapons recently? <laughs> We'll talk about that. And it, you know, it's COVID time, so a lot of folks haven't been in the range, especially with ammo prices. Topic five. Welcome to the new Pew Science members. Thank you for your support. And I've got some things to say, say to you folks. Okay, let's get into this. Topic one. Man, I get this question a lot. People, you know, they're trying to they're trying to make a decision. They're looking for a 30 caliber silencer. They they say, man, Jay, like should I get the Salmon S or the Razor from Rugged? It's like, man, I, I don't know. 
you know, to answer that, let me let me address let me address some things here at the start because I want everyone listening to understand something. I want to be very clear. <laughs> so there's no ambiguity, uh, misunderstanding, misconstruing of my words, my intentions, my statements, any other twisting or reshaping of anything I say on this podcast or in public or in general, okay? Um, Pew Science is not a what should I buy service. Okay, that's not what this is. Um, I do not tell you what to buy. I do not. I do not care what you buy. I do not. I do not care. You, you, you can never buy a silencer from anyone ever. And, and, and you, you can be perfectly happy in that situation. I just want to let you know that like you will not, your life will not end. You will be fine if you do not own a silencer. Okay. You do not need a silencer. You do not need one. You will be fine without owning one. You do not need anything that I talk about on this podcast. Okay. You do not need to listen to anything I say (laughs) ever. Ever. All right. I do not make silencers. I do not sell silencers. I do not get paid if you buy a silencer. I do not have any interest in you buying anything ever in any category whatsoever at all. Okay. With that being said, people ask me what silencer I recommend every day, every day. The amount of questions I get is significant. Now this is good. I'm not complaining, and I certainly do not mind people asking me questions, and I do not mind conversing with you and attempting to answer your questions. However, I will say, Pew Science is about giving you information that you can trust so that you can use that information to make your own decisions, okay? I'm not saying I'm not a nice guy and I won't help you. I'm saying you need to make your own decisions and what is best for you, for your particular use case, okay? Okay, so now that I've said all that, let me, let me say, one, okay, let me say another thing now. Uh, I own Pew Science, okay? This is me, Jay, I'm saying, I, I, this is my company, I own Pew Science. I own this podcast, the, the Jay Situation Podcast, I own the podcast. I own my domain, I own the data rights. I own everything, everything, and so, you know, I am, I am a supreme, dictator of pew science the, the pew science land I, I i am the king and no one has any say in what i what i say on any platform and what i do at all whatsoever okay the only and i mean only thing i cannot say are things that are proprietary and legally protected under contractual nda agreements and things like that you know verbal agreements i have with clients Written agreements I have with clients, written agreements I have with other parties, manufacturers, you know, yeah. That's pretty simple, right? Okay. Information about Pew Science testing and analysis, you know, information about testing and analysis clients, strictly confidential. No exceptions. Ever. Ever, ever. Full stop. Simple. Super simple, right? Okay. Okay. So that's the, that's the second thing I want to say. Third thing I want to say. I have my own opinions. Okay? I, I, I'm a person. So I have my own opinions. I have a few classes or categories of opinions. So let, let me, let, let, let's review the type, types of opinions I have. First, first category is my professional opinion uh, of technical and objective performance of products. This is based on facts that I observe in testing. Empirical or experimental results and observations resulting from analysis of, 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 the, of the test data. Okay, that, that, that's one category of opinion. Another opinion, um, engineering judgment opinion. You know, conclusions that one could deem reasonable as a result of reviewing certain metrics. Not necessarily, necessarily based on data, but extrapolation based upon known observations and postulations that one could assume to be true. 
okay? And I usually qualify these statements so you know when I'm, when I'm making them, okay? No surprise, okay? You guys listen to me talk. You, you know, I'm not trying to blow your skirt up here. Okay, and then the third and final category of opinion that I have is, is personal gun guy opinions that are completely subjective. You know, sure, sometimes they're supported by facts. Overall, I have, I have a right to form my own subjective opinions on things because I'm a human being who holds opinions, okay? I don't have to defend that, okay? So, but I've given you three types of opinions that I have and that I give publicly. And I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying the, the, these things in, in the detail like this because there are a lot of people consciously or subconsciously, verbally or non-verbally, that believe I should never give opinions that fall into the, that third category, that subjective category, okay? This is because people are viewing Pew Science as an independent test laboratory, which it is. Pew Science is independent and, you know, it offers unbiased data and reviews for public and private consumption. However, I also have an opinion. And this podcast is the J Situation Podcast. This is not the Pew Science Podcast. Pew Science sponsors this podcast. Yeah, I own Pew Science. Yeah, I own this podcast. But that doesn't matter. All right? This is an important distinction. All right? You need to listen to this. I'm saying this because when I give personal opinions on this podcast or in a DM to someone or on a in telephone conversation to a person or an email, I'm doing that as, a, as one guy. I'm a guy. All right? I'm the head of the largest ever public suppressed small arms research cooperative. Okay? But I'm not going to stop being a gun guy, and I'm certainly not going to stop having an opinion. Okay? So if you have an issue with me having an opinion, I understand, and that is fine. But just know that I do not disparage any entities. Never have, never have. Never going to do it. Haven't done it. Um, I do not offer opinions as facts unless they are substantiated and the information is in the public domain. Okay? And I do not have any ill intentions. Okay? I, I think I've proven that. So that was a very long way of saying, <laughs> here's what I think, and you should think for yourself. <laughs> I, those of you who know me know exactly why I'm saying all this, okay? But I, I, I want to say it so that, you know, if you want, you can play it back to yourself if you're confused, <laughs> Okay? That way you don't have to dig for it. It's, 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 it's immortalized. Okay? It's, it's immortal, immortalized in digital audio. <laughs> so so now, now to answer the question. Let's, let's get to this question now. The dead air Sandman asks of the rugged razor. Hmm. Okay, so to answer that, and to be clear, this question is, this is, there's a reason why I'm addressing this in its own segment on a podcast. Okay, this is a, a super popular question. You wouldn't believe it. Okay, so, so to answer this, I, I think we need to talk about your use case. All right? I have to assume that if you're asking about these two silencers, you're interested in using a semi, semi-automatic or fully automatic host weapon. That's, I'm just going to assume. All right? If this is not the case... And it, it, you need to stop and reevaluate what are you what you are looking to buy because these two silencers are poor choices for dedicated bulk gun use. Okay, I'm gonna say that right now, and you know that. I hope you understand that. If, if you want to know why, please read the just read the reviews on PewScience.com. The Sandman S is in Sound Signature Review 611. The Rugged Razor is in Sound Signature Review 616. They're actually compared to one another in in members only research supplement. 617 in extreme detail and then again in overall in overall basically overall detail and performance parameters in the intermediate results summary 618 you got you got four articles to read on this okay that I, i've written for you and co it's comprehensive all right so if you're listening to this and you haven't reviewed all those articles or if you aren't a member so you haven't seen the comparison of the inner ear response you know offered in the, the research supplement 617 that's okay that's fine. 
I'm here to tell you the Razer is louder than the Salmon S. Okay? For sure. Everyone knows that. It has a higher back pressure than the Salmon S. Not, 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 not by much. Not by much. It's higher a little bit. So that's important to know. Um, but the big difference besides sound is weight. The Razer, if you use a little M2 brake from Rugged, that little brake they got, weighs 16.8 ounces total. Okay? That's a little over a pound. A little over a pound total. Total system weight. The Salmon S, with its mount, weighs 21.7 ounces. That's about five ounces more than the Razer. Okay, on the end of your barrel. Five, you, you're, you're hanging five more ounces off the end of your barrel, okay? Le less than half a pound, but more than a quarter of a pound, okay? So you're, you're, you're hanging off a little bit more than a quarter pound off the end of your barrel when you go from the Razor to the Salmon S, okay? All right, I'm just trying to paint, paint a picture for you. But also, the, the Salmon S is longer. So it's a longer silencer and it's heavier, so it's gonna feel even heavier than a quarter pound just to do the way, do the way moment arms work. Okay, because the center of gravity is a little bit further out there. Now, so forget, every, so forget about everything else right now and think about that. Th think about that weight difference and, th and think about what you're gonna be doing with it, okay? You know both of them are not appropriate for bolt guns. You know this. You, 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 you know they're, they're for an AR-15 or a, or a 308. Let's be honest, <laughs> okay. What, are you gonna put a Salmon S on a bolt gun? What, are you gonna put a, you're gonna hang a, you're gonna hang a 21.7 ounce thing off the end of a bolt gun? Come on, guys. Like, let's be real right now. Um, you, you're gonna put it on an AR-15, AR you're gonna put it on an AR-308, you're gonna put it on an M16. You're, pro you're probably going to be wearing hearing protection. You, you know why? You know why you're going to be wearing hearing protection? Well, I haven't released 5.56 data, but if you're in the market for a Razer or Sam S for an AR platform, you have to know that it's not going to be super duper ninja quiet, right? So you know that part. But also, if you're shooting with firing schedules that can be with, with, withstood by silencers constructed, the, like, both these silencers have stellite baffles. You feel me? <laughs> like... If you're shooting with these, why, why? Why are you doing that? Well, one could make the assumption that you will be shooting high volumes of fire relatively, and that's why you're interested in, the, in these two models, right? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm making some assumptions here, but I'm not too far off, right? Maybe this is giving you some food for thought if you're disagreeing here, but let's continue, okay? So here's the thing. Here, here, here I'm gonna trip you up a little bit. I, I actually don't think you should be comparing the Salmon S to the Razor at all. I, I think they're in a different class. I think they're two different classes of silencers. They're not the same size. They're not the same weight or anything. So I actually don't think they should be cross shopped, even though uh, people do cross shop them a lot. I think if you're looking at something like the Razor, you should be looking at the Salmon K, not the S. Now the same NK has a has the same total system weight as the rugged razor. When you when you use the M2 brake with the razor, you got it. So now that's apples to apples. You know what I'm saying? Now the razor is about an inch longer than the same NK, but the razor is quieter than the same NK. Okay, so now we're go back to that salmon S versus razor. You're like, well, the same S is way heavier. It has a little quieter than the razor, but it's heavier and longer. Well, now the razor is a little bit longer than the K, but it's the same weight and it's quieter than the K. So for the same weight, but an inch longer, so 6.4 inches, which isn't very long, the razor is the clear choice <laughs> between that and the K, right? And the same and K. So if you were comparing the same and K to the razor, you would pick the razor just based on the clear, just the clear choice. Um, I, I would not... In, in no circumstance could I see a reason to p purchase the same NK over the Razor. Like, objectively. Like, 
The Sam AK does have a little bit lower back pressure, than, but the Razor doesn't have high back pressure. High. The Razor does not have high back pressure. <laughs> okay, it just doesn't. Um, so, you know, if you're looking to compete with the Sam NS and you want something durable, but similar in sound signature, I think, I think you're really looking at the Radiant from Rugged instead. It's not quite as durable as a Sam NS, but it's, it's much, much, much lighter. And uh, it's still actually full auto rated. You know, the SOCOM firing schedule can be performed without damage to that thing. Um, and you're not going to be running it that hard. Probably. I mean, some of you might. Some of you, a very small cross section of the people listening might. But come on. So there, again, if you're thinking of Sam NS and you want something around the same sound suppression level, there, again, I'd be recommending a rugged silencer over it. I'd be saying, yeah, get the, get the, get the Radiant. I mean, that's just based on, that's just based on performance metrics and data. I mean, that's what I would do. Um, yeah, the, the rugged sensors have a, have a little bit higher back pressure. Those two, I mean, you got to keep in mind the Radiant and the, and the Razor actually, those are two of the lower back pressure silencers from rugged for the rifles. You know, that's the, 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 the Razor was developed specifically f to reduce back pressure. And then the Radiant was too, compared to the short configuration of the Surge. You, you know this, you've seen that in the data and people who shot those silencers back to back under, on semi-auto hosts know that. This is, this is common knowledge. This is, this is like, this is common knowledge. Um, I don't think the back pressure difference between the, those two rugged silencers and the, and the Sandman series it is big enough to make a huge difference on host weapons with the silencers we're talking about. I, I just don't think they are. And and um, the, unless unless you have some kind of notoriously gassy host that's non-adjustable and you need absolutely the closest thing to having an unsuppressed gun possible, okay, which is a super loud silencer. So as far as super loud silencers go that actually suppress, kind of, the Sam NK is cool. I mean, I've never shot a gun that couldn't function with the Razor. And that's my experience. You sh show me a gun that won't function with the Razor, with the Rugged Razor. <laughs> I mean, I, I, could, I could be wrong. There could be, maybe, maybe there's some kind of weird gun that won't function with the, with the Rugged Razor. I don't know. Show me. Um, okay, so, so that's the data-based opinion. Now keep in mind, this is based on this is based on wearing hearing protection due to the firing schedules involved with needing those silencers. If you want to know which one you should pick because you're you're gonna, you know, not only use them for range time, but for home defense too, or hunting, and, and you want to make sure to have the quietest silencer, I would say if it's home defense, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna be having firefights in your house, dude. You're just not. I mean, you don't want that. So I would say if it's hunting, you're looking at, you're looking at the wrong silencers, unless it's the Radiant due to the weight. Okay? So forget about the Sam S and the Razor if you're only looking at hunting. Go with something like the Radiant or the Trash Panda or something light. Um, and let, and, you know, unless you're hunting from a stationary position, in which case I would, I would, I would just then get something way longer and quieter. Forget about all these. Get something stupid. Get something super long and quiet. If you're gonna, if you're gonna be just hunting from a stationary position, you're not moving around at all. Okay, it's all about your use case. Okay. Okay, so that's that's some classes of opinions I have. Now let's talk. Let's talk about the subjective opinion. Let's talk about my subjective opinion based on observations. I, I would still go rugged on this one. Um, I like the mount. I like the mount better. I just do. Um, it, it, it's lighter. Um, I mean, you know, sure, you got to turn the locking collar instead of turning the whole silencer like the chemo. But I just think the rugged mount's simpler and, I, and, it, I, and it's stronger. It's stronger than the chemo. I mean, if you, I mean, you don't even have to take my word for it. Look, the, the rugged mount's ready for the 300 Remington Ultra Mag, and the chemo's not. 
That's all you need to know. That that's that's from the manufacturers. If you want to take that up with them, take it up with them. That's not okay. So there's some there's a data point for you. Okay. Okay. So now here's a, here's my gun guy opinion. Here's here's like if we were sitting at the bar, um, or you you saw me at a gun show or we're at the range or we're just talking. I would still go rugged unless there's a machine gun you really think would look cool with the salmon S. That's what I say. I mean, maybe for looks, you know, m maybe you like the look of the salmon series better. Maybe, um, I don't know, man. M maybe you like the chemo. Maybe the chemo is your thing and you love it and you have it on all your guns and you just love it and you're, you're installing your silencer under a handguard, a center fire machine gun silencer under a handguard for some reason. I, I mean, I wouldn't do something stupid like that, but there are certainly people that do it. And um, so maybe you, you, you have to have that because you have to remove your silencer and blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know. I mean, on paper, the Sam S is better for sound and back pressure on paper. For me, for me, I, I, I pick rugged based on overall quality, uh, customer service, design pedigree, weight, aesthetics, uh, the mount. Oh, that's what I pick. That's like, that's my, that's my answer. That's like my, my opinion, like my personal, like what I would do. Um, I, I'd, I'd probably recommend the Razor over the Sam and S at, uh, or K every, every day of the week for a semi-auto AR or machine gun. Cause that's what I would personally use. Um, d does that mean it's the right choice for you? Maybe not. Maybe not, but, uh, now you know what my opinion is based on data. Um, you know, ob objective engineering judgment and, and subjective thoughts from my own collection and use. Like that's just, I, you know, I, I, I've answered this question in different ways, different times, different people. And it, I just get the same, the same question so much. I'm just like, I'm just going to do it on the podcast that way. You know, there's so many dang people listening to this. this. Here's my opinion. Okay, that that way it's like it's super super simple, super simple for you to hear it. Um, look, and I've shot, I've used the Sam and S. I tested it. I've shot the Sam and S out of a helicopter. Um, sound it sounds good. The Sam and S sounds good. I had hearing protection on when I was shooting it from the helicopter. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say it sounds bad. It, it's one, it's a great silencer. It, Sam and S balances suppression and back pressure better than any silencer I think we've seen so far. Right? I mean, y y this is the data. I'm not, this isn't, that's not my opinion. Like that's, that's what we see in the data. Okay. I think they hit the sweet spot. Salmon S is the sweet spot, and that's why a lot of people like it, I think. Well, besides all the marketing, but I think, like, the people who understand silencers, I think that's why they, they like the Salmon S. If the Salmon S was lighter and the chemo was a different mount, and um, it was just better quality, I think... I think it'd be way better, a way better silencer. I mean, that's just me. Like, that's, that's what I think. Um, look... This isn't a knock on dead air, so don't get it twisted. I know there's like hundreds of people. Oh, he said this. Shut up. It's like, <laughs> relax. Um, it's not a knock on dead air. I, I just think Rugged has a better place in this particular part of the market, given the information that I've seen in my evaluations. Um, I have no idea if the sales numbers indicate that conclusion. Like, I don't know. I don't sell science. I have no, I'm not privy to the information. I have no idea. Um, but I wouldn't too much. I wouldn't put too much credence in, in sales numbers. I can tell you that much. Like this day and age, what I do know from talking to manufacturers is that if you can manufacture something, you can sell it. Like 
the demand is so high, like don't, there's no problem selling things. So that, that's, that's an observation in the gun industry right now. So, you know, d do I have some brand loyalty because I own some rugged stuff? I don't know, maybe. I don't know if I'd call it brand loyalty. Um, I, I mean, I guess I have a lot of experience with it. I mean, I own some dead air stuff too, just so you know. Just, you know, so we're clear here. Uh, I don't really have a dog in this fight. I do not. Um, I do, like I said earlier, like, I do not care what you buy. I do not care. But I'm just, I'm just telling you what I like. I'll tell you this much. I own a, I own a Rugged Surge, a Radiant, and a Razor. Okay? And guess which one is perfect for an M16? The Razor. The freaking Razor is perfect for the M16. It's the weight and the length, guys. Like, if they made the Radiant non-modular with another baffle, it would make it quieter and, and just as light, and, and I bet it would be cool a cooler silencer, and I'd, maybe I'd put up with the length for that. But right now, it's, a, it's the length of the short, short surge, you know, the Radiant is. And it has a little back pressure, but if you're using it on an AR, man, I, I don't know. L let me analyze some more data and get back to you. I, I need to analyze it and maybe that'll change my mind, but hold on. You know what? Actually, I'm doing this in real time. Let me, let me open up a spreadsheet. You have to bear with me for a second. I'm gonna open up a spreadsheet real quick. Okay. So I just tested some stuff. So where's the razor at? Okay, and where's the radiant? Radiant full. Okay, just... okay, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me look at the ear numbers. Huh, interesting. That's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, you know what's really crazy about this? Like, you're gonna have to wait for the analysis, but I think a lot of people are about to lose their minds. Um, I think some people are gonna lose their minds when they start seeing this freaking AR data. Um, I think so. I think so much. There's going to be so much, um, I think there's going to be a lot of people that's, that, that just, that are pissed and also that, oh my God, I just can't wait <laughs> because I think people are misunderstanding what the AR platform is and I think you're splitting hairs a lot of times when you, you need to be worrying about a lot of other stuff. And I think when you test on a bolt gun, see, and I think this is, oh man, I hate being vague with you guys, but I just can't, I haven't processed this data, so I can't, I can't give you numbers because you're gonna, if I give you numbers right now, it wouldn't be ethical, like, for the practice, because you're, you're they're not complete, I mean, it's not processed, it's just like a raw thing, it's peaks, I can't give you just peaks. Um, I think... It is so awesome that we tested bolt gun first with these 30 caliber silencers. Excuse me. I think it is so awesome because I don't think people really have a full grasp on gas operated weapons. And I think people have a crazy idea that they can chase this this pot of gold on a short barrel AR on their SBR, they can chase this pot of gold of hearing safe at the ear, whatever that means, right? What does that mean? What, 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 what does the industry tell you? 140 dB is hearing safe. <laughs> it's like, what a, I've never heard such a m more meaningless statement in my life. You guys already know my stance on that. 
and you know that since you you've been paying attention you know that hearing damage is dose dependent i don't care how many instagram posts for manufacturers tell you it's hearing safe i don't care what the american suppressor association says i don't care what any of these people are saying it's not right and um i don't care and so i'm just gonna say I think people are in for a rude awakening, but I think it's gonna be good. And the reason it's gonna be good is because you guys can stop fixating on this for your ARs and you can start buying stuff that is freaking durable and, and uh, the customer service is good and it still performs decently. And then let's start to focus on things like flash and other signature suppression things. And if you want to use this double duty on your bolt action, awesome. You want to use it on double duty in your 300 blackout? Okay, that's different. That's subsonic. Maybe you want to talk about subsonic? Now that's different. But you're talking about supersonic 556 on an AR, and you, and you, you want to sit here and, 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 you know, freak out about this? Like, I'm not going to tell you there's not differences, but let's not, oh man. I'm, I'm getting heated right now just by myself talking because I have heard the craziest stuff. I have heard the, cra the craziest stuff. Um, from, from people, from, from, from consumers, from manufacturers. I have, I've, had, I've heard... I've heard manufacturers say things like, well, you need to keep in mind that, you know, this, there's washback of blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Let, relax. Relax. How would you even know that? How would you even know when you're not even testing with the full waveforms? There are no, you know, there, I don't, I don't, okay, I'm going to, I don't think there's any manufacturer that's looking at the whole waveforms. I don't, I don't think there is right now. Because Surefire doesn't. Um, I don't, Q doesn't. Uh, Rugged doesn't. Dead Air doesn't. Um, let's see. Sandra Co. doesn't. CGS doesn't. I keep naming it. YHM doesn't. OSS, Griffin, uh, name, name, Advanced Armament Corporation, uh, Gemtech, GSL, um, n name a company, name a major manufacturer of silencers. So, like, how would you know what's happening? How would you know? How would you know? Okay, so I'm gonna, okay, my blood pressure is getting too high right now. So, um, where, where, where was I? I was talking about the <laughs> Look, I'm gonna analyze this data. Remember when I tested nine millimeter and I was like, hey guys, I'm gonna test nine millimeter on a quiet, on a quiet pistol so that you can know, like, I'm not gonna use stupid ammo that's worthless. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use Spear Lom in 147 grain, which is an ammunition type that, that is full power ammunition, so you can understand what to expect from a silencer with any ammunition, but I'm gonna test it on a host that's conducive to silencer use, so that you can understand the true upper bound of performance for your silencer with reasonable ammunition. Okay, you remember that? Okay. And I, I use the HKP30L, okay? Which happens to be a good host. Okay, so for 5.56, five, um, there are like 20 knobs to turn on the, on the test perimeter. So there's, like a, there's like 100 knobs you can turn, really. The primary knobs are barrel length, gas system length, um, buffer weight, spring type, bolt carrier type, stock length, stock position. Um, 
Those are primary types. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, gas block or gas port size, which is or gas block adjustment setting, same thing. Um, and so I, what I'm trying to do here is basically pick like, look, you, you, you're gonna look at a at a at a short barrel rifle. You're gonna look at a short barrel rifle and. You're gonna get different numbers at the at the muzzle. Supersonic 556, five, right? You know that. And you're gonna get higher numbers at the ear with louder silencers. You know that, right? But eventually you're gonna to get to a point. Eventually you're gonna to get to a point where you You, 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 you're not as quiet as, 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 I mean, you're going to get to a point where you're not going, you're going to have some kind of diminishing return at the, at the, at the, at the ejection port because there's just a baseline level of stuff happening. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, and so I'll show you, I did some tests with a few silencers in a very controlled fashion to be able to show you things like this, um, on, on the 11 and a half inch mid-length gas gun with a tuned gas block. Cause remember when you tune the gas block, we are, we're, if we're tuning the gas block, the only thing different at the ear is the minute gas change that you can't adjust with the block because the clicks are only so small. And then the the subsequent overall sound signature and timing. And so I think we're going to get in this zone where it, it sort of starts to blur to you. And I... I think the suppression rating is going to help. I think the suppression rating for the first time, well, I mean, a lot of people already understand. I think a lot of people already understand the suppression rating and they find it useful. But I think when you see the semi-auto data, you're going to be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? And I think that it's going to help. And it, yeah, I think it's going to help. So let's go back. So back to our conversation or the topic here about the razor and the, and the salmon S. That was a huge tangent. But I basically was, what I was trying to say there was that I need to analyze stuff and get back to you because the short surge and the radiant and the razor. And what that what that does to the AR if you just if you just the gas for each one, etc. Like what is that doing? Because remember, everyone talks about ARs like you can't adjust the gas. Like whenever I hear stuff, like I hear manufacturers say things like, um, "Oh well, yeah, this is going to be louder at the ear because it has a higher back pressure." I'm like, okay, that could be true. But then you're assuming that they can't adjust their gas system. I guess you're also assuming that most of the back pressure is coming down the barrel instead of through the direct impingement system, which could be true, right? But then what if you use a freaking bolt carrier that, that stays locked longer? Or, or, or your shooter's using a heavier buffer or both? So you either have longer uh, mechanical unlocking delay or you have uh, more inertial resistance for unlocking. Forget about the spring. I don't want to hear it. Don't, don't, don't tell me, oh, but what about a spring? Shut up. Don't talk about the spring right now. I'm talking about something that happens from rest. Inertia and mechanical unlock delay. Enough with the spring stuff, guys. Enough. Y you're, the, the springs work but not to slow the initial movement. 
Okay, what, what's the spring force equation? Force equals the spring constant times the displacement through the same um, uh, ordinates, to, to, to the same degree of freedom. Okay, so what happens when displacement is ultra small? The spring force is ultra small too. What does ultra small mean? It means it doesn't do anything. That is a literally, that is a linear three term equation for you. What does that mean? It means spring doesn't do a dang thing early in time. It just doesn't, unless you're going to pre-compress it by a lot, and you're not. Okay? So you're just not, and it's not going to make that, not, not going to make as much a difference to you. There's so much force coming back early time. There's so much acceleration that what do we need? We need mass or mechanical unlocking delay or less force acting on the system. That means less gas. So keep that in mind. So when people say to you, well, it's going to be louder at the ear. Well, and, and then there's, there's silencer manufacturers like, well, our silencer, blah, 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 and you don't need to do it. And I was like, okay, well, for those of you who don't want to like have a gun that is adjustable, that's cool. We'll talk about those guns. And you know what we're going to need to do? We're going to need to test a platform in which it's tuned for an unsuppressed weapon um, system, meaning that you take an AR, you tune it as if there's no silencer on it, you tune it unsuppressed, you have a certain gas setting or a certain gas port size, and then you just put a silencer on and test it without, without adjusting the gas. If you get over functions, so be it. So be it. But you would have to then test every silencer in that program with that weapon like that, understand? And then you could not, it would be impossible to compare those results with, or you could compare them, but it would be impossible to expect that those results would be comparable to results in which you tune the systems. With, with adjusting the gas, understand? So you're going to have to wait, but we're, we're going to start off with tuned SBR, and we're going to go from there. But I wanted you guys to understand this. So then, so when I say like, I'm gonna analyze the data, I'm gonna analyze that data first and give it to you. Now, back to the Razer and Salmon S. I can tell you that with the hearing, with the hearing protection on, I picked the Razer. I mean, why would I use a Surge or a Radiant when I can use the Razer in the shorter? Um, look, there's always the short configuration of the Radiant, but I can tell you this much. Here, here's a teaser for you. Here's a, here's a spo spoiler alert. <laughs> With the short configuration of the Radiant on my 11 and a half inch M16, I saw muzzle flash during the day in bright sunlight at like, at like 1600. Okay, like at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, I saw muzzle flash. Like in, in Texas, in the sun, without cloud cover. Okay? Muzzle flash, like bright enough to make out. All right, that's not something I'm going to deal with. That's not my cup of tea um, with a suppressed weapon. Um, the, short, the short configuration of the rating is useless to me. It's, it's, it's a useless configuration. I don't use it. I don't do it. I don't, I don't need it. I don't want it. Um, so that's like, so, so what do I, so someone asked me, well, you know, what, what would you do? What would you, would you, would you use the radiant or you would use the razor or would you use the Sam and S? I just uh, use the razor. Okay. I mean, that's, so that's the answer for, for me. Um, but you know what I need? I, I need a freaking CGS Helios is what I need. <laughs> I t t you know, you could, t you could tune the gun for it. Um, I bet you you can be sweet even with the solid end cap with all that back pressure. I bet you can tune. I bet you can, I bet you can do it. I don't know. Depends on the gun. It depends on the gun. I don't know. We'll have to see. I know there's a, there's a Pew Science member um, shout out, sir. You know who you are. You have a Helios and all that stuff, and you talk to me a lot. I recall he modified his his end cap of his Helios. 
because he didn't want as much venting as the vented end cap. He wanted less venting. So he wanted something somewhere between the solid end cap and somewhere between the between the solid end cap and the vented end cap. So I think he drilled some holes. He 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 might he might have the perfect setup for, for his machine gun. I don't know. I have to talk to him again. Oh god, I feel like I just got like super upset. <laughs> I um I oh man, I tell you what, I got worked up today. I was I had hired some folks to do something around my house that I've used for a while. We don't get have to get into specifics, but I um I saw them doing I was like I I I had like been super nice for like I don't know years with these folks. I've known these guys a long time and I uh I had told them, "Hey, you know, you need to fix this and this. I don't like the way you're doing this and this." Da 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 da. And um I was always very like, you know, accommodated and patient. And I, I think this morning I, I, I lost my, my stuff. I just lost it. Like I, I completely, I was just like, no, I snapped and I was like, <laughs> I kind of read, I like kind of like told them off a little bit, you know, I was kind of rude. And, um, I don't know, maybe I'm just in that mood right now. It was a good day, but <sighs> just a little bit stressed. <sighs> it's, it's fine. It could, it could just be 2020. Maybe it's wearing on me. What are we, end of September? We're almost October. We got, what we got? We got, we got Halloween. We got, we got Thanksgiving. No, no, no. Let me back up. We got Halloween. We got the elections. And then assuming there's still a country. <laughs> We, we, uh, we, we get Thanksgiving. You know, there's deer season in here too, right? Oh my gosh. Haven't even start. I haven't even prepped. I'm like, oh, this is going to be the death of me. Okay. Topic two. <laughs> Speaking of data now. So, okay. Just finished some testing. I just, I know we just talked about some of it. Um, so I am an insane person. And I spent a full day this past weekend again, and I and I actually completely repeated a test pro, an entire test program, J just just to to verify. Like I I I well one I did some extra tests. Two, I needed to do some system verifications. Three, I needed to do a repeatability study. Um, I'm physically and mentally exhausted, and I I had a guy. <laughs> this is a story for you. I had a guy from a major manufacturer once. He told me. He he when he he saw what I was doing, like he was saw I was field testing, he said, "Man, that's hard work." I was like, "Yeah. It totally is. Totally is." Understatement of the century. I was like, "What?" It was weird. I was like, "Okay, that's a weird thing to say." But I look, I'm not trying to be rude, but yeah, man, it is a tremendous amount of work and that's why no one is doing this. Okay. It's a definite, it is the definition of ridiculous. Now, last time I spoke with you, um, I told you that I had, I had started doing back pressure data, um, for some of this and I'd started to do some interpretation on it. And I was looking at the different subsonic and supersonic flow regimes and seeing if, um, there's scaling apparent in the data and, and, um, to trying to see if that scaling is linear or nonlinear, that's kind of exciting stuff. Right. And so, you know, and, and, and we were trying to look at what we might be able to interpret from the data and so on and so forth. I can tell you that that work that I was doing, it, it stopped where I left it. I, I, since the last time I spoke with you, I, I have not revisited it. I, I just, there, there's no time. There hasn't been time. And so I imagine I'm probably not going to have time again until probably this Friday or so, I'm guessing, or maybe the weekend. And so it's probably going to be the weekend. And so you're going to have to wait a little bit. And I'm sorry, but there's just, there's enough data generated to give us a pretty good start to understanding um, two weapon platforms. 
Okay, I just want to let you know, you know that. So that those two weapon platforms at the eight inch, the eight inch 300 blackout subsonic, bolt action, and 11 and a half inch 556 mid length gas in semi and full auto. Okay. Um, and you full auto nuts, boy, do I have a cool surprise for you. I have a cool surprise for you. I don't want to tell you what it is yet uh, because I'm not sure how I'm going to present it. <laughs> Frankly, I don't know how I'm going to tell you or even what to tell you. I just, I just did something stupid and crazy, and so I just want to, I don't know. I think it's going to blow some people's minds, or maybe it won't. I mean, it kind of blew my mind a little bit. I mean, it didn't blow my mind, but it made me geek out. But I did something cool. So I'll have to show you about show you that in the coming weeks or something. I'm trying to think what else I want to say about the data right now. I think I told you last time that 300 blackout subsonic can be incredibly quiet. That is true. That is true. It really can. Let me... I've got a spreadsheet up here. Let's see. Yeah, dude. It can be quiet. I can tell you, I was shooting this gun. Man, that mini fix. You know what also is cool? The wipes. I did, again, I repeated a wipe, those a wipe testing. I think I told you that, didn't I? Um, I did it again. I did it again. Long duration shots, numerous shots. So that study is going to be published. I'm super excited to publish that data. Ooh, that's going to be so great. I don't think anyone's ever published anything like that. I think that's going to be super cool. And so that's a lot of data. There's a lot of stuff to go through. Um, hey, but that, okay, that's, that brings me to the next topic. Topic three, new sound signature review coming this week. Yes, I have something to show you. I have something to show you. I actually haven't even written it yet. <laughs> oh God, I haven't written it yet, but I, I will have something to show you. I hope this week. I just haven't done it, but I'm going to. I've been busy. Um, I want to. I want to get it done this week, and I think it'll be useful. Useful for people. It's gonna round. It's gonna round some stuff out a little bit and give you a, maybe a complete picture of a certain design. I think, and so I'm excited about that for you. I'm excited about it for the industry. Um, it, it, it's it's one silencer, but it's something that I think. It's just a, it's a little knowledge gap, that's all. It's a little knowledge gap, and I think that once you have it, people can have it, and then they'll have it, and it'll be good. Um, I think some people will like it. I've been getting some feedback that a lot of you are enjoying the reviews, and that really makes me happy because I know that not everyone is going to really, really get a lot out of every review. I, I get that, uh, you know, because, you know, there's some people on every, on every review launch, you know, that get something out of it. And um, some people don't, but none of the reviews seem like they're going to waste. So that's cool, right? I think that's encouraging to me. And so that, that makes me know that this stuff is proving useful. And at the end of the day, if no one finds the data useful, I think it's an exercise in futility, quite frankly. Um, so I'm glad the data is helping. And so stay tuned for the review this week. I think you're gonna like it. now. Topic four. Topic four. Oh. Have you folks actually had time to practice with your weapons? I have not. I have not. I sat down today and I realized it's been a year since I've actually done like discipline practice. Is that like one of the craziest things you've ever heard? It's true. Um, I haven't, I haven't shot, like, I mean, I've shot a lot in the past year, like a, a lot, a lot, but it's been testing silencers. Like I haven't, I mean, that doesn't count. Um, but oh, I will, I will say this though. I forgot to tell you when I'm testing with the mini fix, there, there was a, like, there's this fence post, right? In the distance. Um, like little T post, you know those little T posts, little steel T posts. I kept hitting it with subsonic three hundred blackout. Um, like subsonic three hundred blackout out of the mini fix is no joke. I could not believe how repeatable the accuracy seemed to be. 
Like, it was, I don't know. Um, you know, the hang time is long because it's subsonic. With subsonic 300 blackout. But holy moly, you know, I, I think, I was, I've been doing some thinking. I, I just, like, I was thinking about that the other night. And I think you have to keep in mind that if you shoot something subsonic, like if you shoot a subsonic projectile, it doesn't have that transition from supersonic to subsonic. Understand? So like it's already subsonic. So it doesn't have a shock wave that's forming. And so what you're getting is you do have the air piling up in front of the bullet. You have that pressure wave, right? Um, you, you've seen that in the subsonic 22 data on the science or sound standard, right? And on pscience.com. I don't know if you guys remember that, but remember like, so, so this, the way it works is, um, air molecules can only communicate at the speed of sound. Like they, like think of, think of air molecules as like, people standing in a movie theater, okay? Or standing in a crowd, a crowd of people. And um, they, 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 can, they can reach out and they can touch each other, they can tap each other on the shoulder and say, hey, excuse me, Mr. Um, Mr. Man in front of me, can you please move out of the way? And the, the, the guy in front of the, the gentleman he turns around and says, yes, sir, I, I can move out of your way. And the guy behind says, great. And they, and he, they kind of move. They all move together because they know. Or like someone's like they're trying to get out from somewhere and someone's pushing on someone and the, someone's pushing on the person in front of them. And then eventually they all just pile up because they can communicate. Like they can touch each other. They can hear each other. So those are like molecules. Molecules are the same exact way as those people. But... But if the thing moving and pushing through that crowd of people is going faster than the people can tell the person in front of them that the thing's coming, everyone gets knocked down, right? It, it gets like wild and crazy. And there's like a discontinuity. There's a breakdown in communication, right? That's called a shock wave. And that's what happens when you go faster than the speed of communication in the media or in the medium. So when you're traveling faster than the communication speed in the medium, you create a discontinuity. And that's what supersonic flight is. So when you're traveling subsonically, you know, whether it's you walking down the street or a bullet flying below the speed of sound and air, if the air is the medium through which you're shooting, then you do get things piling up in front of the object. The people will pile up in front. The air will pile up in front of the bullet. You will get a pressure wave. You will notice that in the PewSoft data. You will see that. But you will not see a shock in early time. You'll see the muzzle blast later after the pressure wave, but you're not gonna see the shock combined. You're gonna see two distinct things happening. And so, Back to the mini fix. So I think if you get your trajectory just right, you can make subsonic with fast twist do some crazy stuff. I just, it, it doesn't have to do anything else. You shoot, you, it's spinning fast, you shoot it. It doesn't have to worry about slowing down past some weird barrier where, cause okay, think about this. I just explained supersonic and subsonic, um, Exterior ballistics in a very rough, crude terms, but think, think about this. Like, let's say you're going super fast. You're cruising and you're, you're creating a shock wave. As you, like, you, you're, you're so fast that the air in front of you doesn't even know you're coming. And by the time you're freaking past it, it's like, what was that? But then let's say you're traveling so for such a long time that eventually you slow down. Well, what happens when you slow down enough so that the shock doesn't form anymore and then the air starts to be able to communicate in front of you? 
What if you were running fast through a crowd of people so fast you were knocking everyone over, but then you slowed down, but there were still people there. And then you started to push them. You had to push them out of the way because you lost your momentum. That's the same thing that happens when you shoot a bullet and it slows down from supersonic and becomes what we call transonic between the supersonic and subsonic flow regimes. In that transition from supersonic to subsonic flow, you get destabilization of the projectile. Um, but if you're already subsonic and you can just slow down and become more subsonic, there's really no destabilization that happens from an external standpoint, but there's, there can be destabilization that happens due to center of pressure on, um, on the rotating body. But that, but, but if you spin it fast enough, you counteract that destabilization from the center of pressure moment arm across the center um, center of gravity. We already talked about that in the episode freaking, I don't know, 20 episodes ago or wherever I talked about that. So that's why we spin fast. Um, and so I think with the mini fix, that one in five twist, you can spin these heavy projectiles. They're already subsonic. It just, it's just super accurate and it's super fun. And... I got a kick out of it. I couldn't believe how freaking accurate it was. I was hitting stuff that I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe I was kept in that T-post. I don't remember how far it was away, but it was like, I don't know, 75 yards or so or more. I was hitting that T-post shot after shot after shot. Like, I mean... Think about that. That's kind of crazy, right? And so, um, you know, what's a T-post? Like an inch across? <laughs> Two inches across or something? So, that was cool. And I, I wasn't even trying, really. I was kind of aiming for it because I was aiming the same place every time to shoot. And it happened to be there, so it was a cool reference point for me. I was like, oh, okay. I'm going to aim at that thing. You know what I mean? And so, that was cool. Like, I I, um, I enjoyed... I mean, I, I guess I'm talking about this in this... In this topic of practice because it has been a long time since I have actually practiced shooting because of this Pew Science stuff. And so this was actually during the, during the sound tests, I was doing this and I was like, dang, like what a cool, like I forgot how fun it was. I forgot. I just forgot how fun it was. And so Anyway, I, I, I thought that was cool. I cannot wait to put a really light scope on that gun and take it hunting. I think that would be fun because I'm, I've shot the gun so much now with testing that like I just I feel like I know the gun. The way like it feels, I know it and the trigger and I just know, I know it now. And so I had that Vortex on it, that one to six. It's cool, but it's too heavy. It's too heavy. I, I, ooh, I put it, I think I'm going to post a picture today. I just took a picture this afternoon. Um, it, there's a Y, I put a YHM silencer on the front of it. And um, an old YHM Phantom Ultra, the titanium. Phantom Ultra 30, I think it's, that's what it's called. It's an old, old YHM, it's like 2014 or so. I'm gonna put that on there. Show you some bolt carriers and stuff. It's, it's a cool. It looks. It's a cool picture. I think. I think I, it has the vortex scope on there. I want to put a loophole. I think I'm gonna put a loophole on there. I was thinking. I was thinking to put a night force. I feel like the night force is awesome, but it's heavy. I just want the lightest thing possible. I want something stupid. That's what I want. Hmm. Anyway, I, I want to bring up the subject because. Look, don't forget to practice and train, guys. Just don't. I mean, you, you never know when you're going to need the skills. Especially nowadays, man. I feel like I feel like we all need to keep our practice up. I need to be better about that, you know. But if I do, there's less time for pew science. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a balance eventually, I, I promise. Okay, topic five. Topic five. 
Welcome to New Pew Science members. Thank you for your support. Oh, man, I got another manufacturer who joined recently. That was really cool. He, well, they're a dealer and, and they're starting to be manufacturer. So, you know, they, they joined. Um, that was a really big deal to me. That was awesome. I love when that happens. I love talking to them about it. Their support, like, blows me away. I'm, like, super excited about it. It was just, just a really good day when that happens. Really cool. And, and so I just... I don't want to mention them by name. I try not to mention all the ones. Um, I feel like some people like their privacy, but I don't know. Maybe I'll mention them some other time if they want me to. But um, I did want to say, talking about membership and talking about not just that, but just folks I speak with, um, although it was a different question, part of the discussion of the Razor and the Sam NS today was was inspired by a question I got from a gentleman this week on social media. Because um, I get that question all the time, like between those two silences. But this specific question that this gentleman asked yesterday was, if I already had a rugged radiant, what other rugged rifle silencer would I get? Like, that was his question to me. Because he was like, I'm gonna be, I primarily use 5.56 five, and 7.62. That's what he said. And he said, if he, and he already owns a Radiant. Because he said 5.56, five, I immediately said Razor. I mean, it was like, it was like, it was instant. I, I think I messaged him back so fast that he was like, whoa. And then we started talking, you know, um, I, I think I was really hopped up on pre-workout because I, I was at the gym. I had been, I, I had been at the gym. And, uh, and that guy then told me after a good conversation, we, we talked quite a lot. He, he told me that he was going to join Pew Science and then he joined. I was like, holy crap. Well, that's pretty cool. I told him, hey, that's greatly appreciated. But you know what else he told me? I, it was really interesting. He said... He, he doesn't really have much time to read the reviews, but he does listen to the podcast and he wants to support the effort. How cool is that? Like, I didn't, that's grassroots right there, man. Like that's, that to me alone, that's why I wanted to tell you guys about this because that, it just really, it just really stuck with me as it like, uh, man, a lot of people hate the saying, but like the proof is in the pudding type of thing. You know what I mean? Where, where I wanted this to be grassroots and it's totally grassroots. And that right there is like, what a better definition. Like he's like someone who's like, I'm giving you data and stuff. And like, here's all this other stuff. And he's like, nah, it's like that. He's like, that's cool. I just listen to the podcast. And I just want to help you out. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, I didn't think that that was a thing. Like, I, like this whole time, I'm thinking, like, if I don't dot my I's and cross my T's, like, I'm going to disappoint people and they're going to want to see this and that, da, da, da. But it's like, there's, like, I can't, like, this isn't the only guy who said this to me where he's just like, no, nah, dude, I just want you to keep going. I'm like, thank you, man. Like, that means a lot. And so shout out to you, sir. Um, means a lot. I sent you a welcome email. Thank you so much. Your support. It means the world. All you folks that support Pew Science, it means the world. It supports this podcast. It makes this worth doing. It really makes this worth doing. I do this every week now. And I love doing it. I love talking to you guys. I love updating you on the progress and everything like that. Um, so you guys are making it happen. It's incredible. And I, I don't want to turn this into an advertisement for Pew Science membership. Okay? But I wanted to highlight the conversation with the gentleman and give him a shout out. And so, again... You know who you are, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 there is one other thing I want to, about the member feedback and the social media feedback. Remember that survey on Instagram about testing that uh, it was the unsuppressed muzzle device testing stuff? Man. Okay, that's not going to happen right now, guys. It just not. I wanted, I wanted to tell you that and I wanted to tell you why. The main reason is that we don't want to give the ATF ammunition to regulate things like that, okay? Um, 
if you look up the definition of a silencer, according to the ATF, uh, you, you can see why. You could imagine why we might not want to do high fidelity sound signature characterization of devices that shape muzzle, muzzle blast. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that PSoft can characterize those things in a way that you don't want them. We don't just, we just don't need to do that right now as like a community. Like we're all on the same team here, guys, like me and you listening. And so like, I don't think like I've talked with several folks. Um, I've talked to several manufacturers. I've talked with several consumers. Um, actually, and the, the, the manufacturers gave me this feedback like last year, some of them did. Like they told me, hey, um, be careful with this and that, da, da, da. And I was like, roger that. Um, and I had kind of forgotten some of those conversations. <laughs> and then some of them were kind enough to remind me because <laughs> they saw my Instagram poll. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that part. Oh. So they, they brought that up and I was like, dang, man, that's like, super true. Like we, we definitely don't want to poke the bear. So that was important. Um, I, I think the data is still useful. I know, Hey, look, th there, there are certain accessories that are only accessories because they can be used with certain things. And if those certain things become silencers, then some of those accessories then become silencer parts. And we don't want that. Does that make sense? Okay. So that, that's the short story on why I'm not going to publish the data on those things right now. But does, does it mean that I'm not going to test them? No, absolutely not. I, it just means I'm not going to publish te public test data right now. Now, would I maybe publish it only for members? I mean, maybe. I was thinking about that. Like, can I do that? I mean, I can do it, but like, would that help? I don't know. If it's protected by member access, does that mean that the ATF doesn't get to use it against us? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's, if that works. I don't know if I look, I'm not an attorney. And frankly, even if I was, I'm not sure I would know the answer to that question, but um, I don't know. It's probably faulty logic. It's probably, it's probably not true. But anyway, if you have questions about this, um, I, I'd rather talk to you privately about it. So email me tech at pewscience.com. That's T-E-C-H at pewscience.com. We'll talk about it. Or DM me on social media, whatever. It's fine. Okay. It's about an hour. All right. It's a good time. Actually kind of knocked this out pretty quickly today. I'm going to try to work on a sound signature review for you guys. So that's all I have for today. Stay safe out there. Um, watch, watch for that content coming to you this week. And I will talk to you folks again soon. Bye.